everyone, Janie here. Welcome back. Welcome back, Fanula. Fanula is the owner of Cottage Gardens of Petaluma. I hope you all saw the last video where Robbie and I were vidi visiting this gorgeous nursery. It was so much fun. It was so Thank fun you. To meet you. So I learned about Fanula from Fine Gardening Magazine. She writes articles for Fine Gardening Magazine that are fantastic. Mm -hmm. So I advise you all to check her out. And then when we were visiting, you were telling us how much you loved David Austin's, right? Yes, I love the David Austin roses for so many reasons. And one of the reasons is they are so different and so beautiful and so much work has gone into creating them and creating the different forms and shapes right. and sizes and fragrances. Yeah. It's really, really special. So, so David Austin, do you, do you know a little bit about David Austin? I know that he spent a lifetime of breeding roses. Right. And he used the best qualities of the really old roses, the uh -huh. Gallicas, the Damasks, and he mixed them up with the newer roses for, you know, hardiness and right. disease resistance right. and everything yeah. like that. Yeah. So he took the best of the old roses, the best of the new roses, put them together and came up with something just extraordinary. And you notice the difference oh my in goodness. the roses. Yes. So how many roses do you have at home, Fanula? <laughs> I well, have to ask. you know, over 70 is all I'm going to admit to. <laughs> okay. I know. You stopped counting after I stopped 70. I stopped counting after 70 because it was just like, oh, kind That's of That's a lot. Thing. That's a yeah. lot. But I can see why, because you have access to all these beautiful, beautiful roses here. I know. So how fun. It is a fabulous thing to be addicted to. That's yes. all I'm going to say. I mean, look at them. They're gorgeous. Look at them. So these are bare root, correct? They are, they come into us bare root mm -hmm. and we pop them up immediately because it really gets them off to a great start. Okay. Um, leaving them bare root too long, in my opinion at least, mm -hmm. stresses the poor plants already. Okay. So when they get here, we pot them up, we check them, we inspect them, we root prune them, top prune them, get them in a pot. We have our own nursery mix. Um, so they are Perfect. They're they get ready up here, to go. perfect, and That's they're really happy. Nice. Yeah. And so, so it's also a little bit of quality control. Although David exactly. Austin has pretty good quality, right? They have excellent quality. We didn't have to complain or send back anything this good. year <laughs> at all. And, and you know, as you can see, they're really wonderful. They're gorgeous. They're clean. Just just beautiful, beautiful shapes and forms. And I think it's really special that Cottage Gardens of Petaluma sells David Austin's because, I mean, at least here in California, they're kind of hard to find sometimes, right? Yeah. yeah, they can be hard to find. They have been hard to find. The pandemic did a yeah. little bit of a number on the company, I think. But it sure looks to me like they've totally recovered, and I am thrilled to bits. To well, have such a selection. Look at how many. Have any sold or am I? did I get here early enough? I've sold out of one variety, oh, maybe, God. because somebody wanted 20 of them. All of them. Yeah, yeah. exactly. <laughs> and I cannot wait to see what they do with them because it's going to be spectacular. Yes. Like a whole, oh, my goodness. Yes, I love it. I know this is a, a tough question. Mm -hmm. What's your favorite? What's one of your favorites? Do I have to pick one? No, of course not. Of course not. I have different favorites for different reasons. Okay. Um, last year I went through a phase of adoring all of the peachy apricot ones. Okay. Anything peachy apricot, the Bathsheba, Port Sunlight, Crown Princess Margareta, those guys I adore. And Carding Mill, like they Carding are just, Mill. I have every one of them at home and I, of course you do. I know. <laughs> and then I'll pick each, I'll pick them all and put them all in a bouquet together. Oh, and you can see the differences actually when they're all together, or like when you're picking them, you can tell the difference tell. yeah and you can see the differences in the fragrance and the flower form love it there's one of the things that i wanted to say about the david austins is sometimes they don't hold their petals as long as maybe a hybrid tea oh okay but i really like that it's part of what i do when i create a bouquet is you know let the petals fall it adds to the beauty Oh, so, it really adds to the beauty. Oh, it's like having confetti fun. underneath. Oh, I love that. Instrument. I love that thought. That's it's, so wonderful. What is that? Wabi Sabi? Have you heard of that? I have heard of that. It's like a, yeah. a Japanese, like, 
the beauty of the imperfect. Yes. And so that's kind of what you're, oh, I love that it. That is a theme of mine. Totally. I, I love, love imperfection. <laughs> I do but, too. But to me, that's not even imperfection. That's like, you got confetti underneath right. your arrangement. Right. Not it's only so is pretty. the arrangement beautiful, but the table's beautiful exactly. around it. Exactly. Oh, I love that. I'm going to think of that now yeah. from now on. <laughs> Good. Whenever Good. my arrangements go, kind of start falling off. Oh, yeah. how fun. Yeah, don't object to it. Don't go, wow, there's something wrong with that flower. You're, right adds to the beauty. That's part of the David Austin Rose. Yeah, it's part of the David Austin Rose. Like, no, having said that, they don't all do that, but right. I never mind. Yeah. Yeah. And they don't all have to be perfect. Nope. Right? Nope. So you said the apricot ones are your favorite, and then you were telling me how you really like the short climbers? Short climbers. I love them because, I mean, that's what I, I, I ran out of space in my garden, uh -huh. so I would put an obelisk or a post where I could put another rose and have it go straight up yeah. and be there. And so not too tall, like that's going to go, you know, up and over, like an Eden or something like yeah. that. Yeah, But something that's tall. just will grow up the, to tour the obelisk. Exactly. Partly because I love having all those roses right in my face, but I also want to reach them for cutting. Yeah. Yeah, they're nice and reachable. I don't have to go scramble for a ladder. Nice. And it's really great. So give us a couple planting tips for David Austin roses. For David Austin if so, in if general? You, if you had a customer that came in here and said, okay, well, what, what should I do with this rose? Is there okay. anything different or is it pretty similar to any other type of shrub rose? It's pretty similar. Okay. I mean, there are some people that will come in and say, I want one that'll go in a pot. You know, tell me what to do with the pot. Right. I would steer them away from anybody who looks like a climber, and I would steer them towards the short shrub. Okay. Yeah. All and right. there's two or three of those that are really my favorites. What are those? Um, oh, this new one. Eustacia Bai is one of them. Oh, right yeah. Here. Oh, that's beautiful. Oh, my goodness. It's so pretty. And oh, the, I love that little apricot on the, yes. in the inside. The little ruffles and the, yeah, the little apricot. And it's fragrant. Yeah. And it's like one of those ones you can grow in a pot without having to move it up too quickly. It's beautiful. Yeah. I also love Elizabeth, who is named for the late Queen Elizabeth. Mm. It's got that same really flat ruffle yeah. with the apricot in the middle. And it's scented too, so I really, really like that one. I know. What do you think has the best scent of all the David Austins? Mm. You know, what is so, one of the best scents? It I... is so relative because we all have our fits of preference too. Yeah. Do you like do you like to be overwhelmed with the scent yeah. or would you? I like Gertrude Jekyll, Gertrude yeah. Jekyll. That's yeah. a really great scent. Isn't it? Yeah. I love it. That is beautiful. That's yeah. one of those ones you'll have in your house or in your garden and you walking past and you're like, what is that? Go back. I love it. I'm, yeah. I am bringing home a Gertrude Jekyll for my new garden. <laughs> so, it, it's fantastic. I'm so excited about it. So when you take it home to plant, yeah. Right. Um, you would, would you mix it, anything into the hole that you're planting it in? Would you add any amendments? How yeah. do you do it? Yes, that's what I would do. First of all, I would see if you have gophers. Mm. Start with a gopher cage. Okay. Gophers love roses. Mm -hmm. um, but what we always suggest is to dig a hole twice as wide as the root system. Okay. Amend that soil really well and okay. then plant your rose back in that amended soil. Okay. All right. If there's a gopher cage, you include that in that whole mix. Right. Yeah. Um, and then you start, then you stand back. Make sure you give them enough space. A lot of the David Austin roses give you a, a guideline of how big and wide they're going to get, mm -hmm. but they are really happy here in Northern California, mm -hmm. like really happy. There's a difference between how they grow here versus yeah, in, in England, England where or... they were developed in the first place. Yeah. There really, really is a big difference. A lot of times they'll say four feet tall and wide and it's going to be six or seven tall or wide. Oh, funny. So, <laughs> so I'll give funny. us some space. Yeah. 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 We were just talking <clears throat> before we started recording about um, people planting these roses in the front of their gardens Yeah. and how it seems like such a tiny, cute plant, but in just a couple of years, yep. it's going to be. <laughs> it's like, oh my God, you have to move your whole house. Right. Oh, yeah. Right. And it's, I mean, it's so hard because you see these sticks and you think, well, it's not going to do anything. I right? put five of those right there. Yeah. And no. then it's incredible what these roses do. Exactly. Exactly. And they are particularly happy in Northern California. Yeah. So most of them really do best in full sun. Mm -hmm. But another great thing about David Austin is a lot of them do okay in the shade. Mm. Not full shade, yeah. but shadier than, you know, say Less. a lot of your hybrid teas. Yeah. 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 So that allows you to grow roses in even more spots. Isn't that fun? Yeah. 
Can you think of any that do particularly well in a little bit more shade? Yeah, any of the paler ones, like Claire Austin does oh. fine with a little bit of shade. Okay. Um, back to Elizabeth and Emily Bronte also. Okay. The whites, Tend. I still wouldn't put them in full shade. Right. But yeah. they can tolerate some afternoon shade. So I always hear that it's at least six hours of sun for a rose. Yeah. So yeah. would you say these can get four to six hours of sun and maybe be okay? Um, I think that could be true. It's more like the afternoon sun really counts better as sun. Yeah. You know, mm -hmm. so if you had some, if it was shaded from two to four, it's sure as heck not going to hurt it. Okay. It's going to look great. Yeah. Yeah. How fun. I know. That's I'm so thinking fun. of the ones I have at home that are still there after an oak tree grew up and over. Uh -huh. They are doing fine. Oh, I I'm love so that. happy. Mm, yeah. It's like you're so proud of them. Like, you're doing such a good job. Keep going. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> exactly. So how did you start your obsession with David Austin Roses? What started all this? What started it? What started it actually was Gertrude Jekyll. Oh, it really too. was. Oh, yeah. That's so funny. <laughs> it was like that hot pink and the foliage. Yes. <laughs> the whole thing and the fragrance. That's what started it's it. It's just such a beautiful rose. That's really so funny. Funny. That was my, what do you call it? Like, yeah, just like <laughs> my yeah. entryway into the roses. Yeah. Oh, I love it. Yeah, it, there's something about that rose. Mm -hmm. I did plant it in the wrong spot and it did impress me and I did have to move a whole pathway, but it was okay in the end. <laughs> and I just was so impressed with the vigor and the fragrance and the form. Yeah. I'd never really seen anything like that except back in Ireland where I'm from and the really old roses and the really old gardens. I'd never seen anything like that. And that was my gateway rose basically to all the David Austins. And then it went to this, right? Then, yeah, and then I really liked the dark colors for a little while. So uh -huh. I had Darcy Bustle and a couple of others, Thomas the Beckett. Uh -huh. um, then I moved over to the apricots. And this year it's gonna be those little pink flat ones that I was telling nice. you about. Yes. And Stacey Vai and Elizabeth, yes. I love them. So does David Austin come out with new ones pretty often? They do, which is not good for an addict, but it's really <laughs> wonderful. For so 70, huh? Yeah, yeah. 70 only? <laughs> and yeah, yeah, yeah. We'll ask you next season, see how many. <laughs> we'll see how we're going, I know. There's some pots in yeah. going. I know. So he, he, well, David Austin, the company, mm -hmm. comes out with new varieties mm -hmm. so that we can keep feeding our obsession with yes. these type of roses, which is so fun. I exactly. love it. And a lot of the new varieties are built upon the beauty of the older varieties that were successful. Okay. And every year it seems that the disease resistance is getting better. Yeah. Not that I've ever had a problem. Okay. Um, but these are roses that are being sold all over the world. Right. You know, so they're building on the beauty and the success of the older roses, which is really a great idea. Yeah. Um, Taking the best characteristics yeah. out of the old ones. Yeah, yeah absolutely. Yeah. One of my favorite things about David Austin Roses is researching the names mm -hmm. and where the name came from. Me too. And I love it. I just love learning I about the story of why they named it this name, you know? Yes. So yes. I just love it so much. It's one of the reasons why I love Gertrude Jekyll yeah, so much. I know. <laughs> it's I so know. great. How could you not have a rose named you after not? herself? Yeah. I know, and he loved Thomas Hardy books, and he loved, Tom, you know, yeah. that's where you stationed. Roll doll. <laughs> from yes yes ah. it's so cute i, I just love, love stories it. too i love stories it just it's so that you can walk through your garden and you can look at a rose and then think of a story you know yeah. think of like a children's story or something like exactly. that exactly or fun. the honors he was giving people you right know, i love right. that too are you gonna do you think you'll sell out of these pretty quickly i do yeah i do i did order a few extra of my personal favorites just because yeah you know i can't hog them all myself right you know <laughs> And we are expecting some tree rose versions of them oh, too, nice. which is going to be really great because just picture David Austin, but like just yeah. right in front of your face. Yes. Oh, I love it. How would you recommend people get their hands on these? Because I know it's like, uh, you know, you emailed me and said they're in and mm -hmm. then I booked it here to yeah. Petaluma to yeah. get here in time. Basically that. Yeah. Basically so do that. So you have a newsletter. Would you announce yeah. it in your newsletter? You know, I'm, I, I do. I'm a little careful about it too because I have a lot of customers who are really waiting for them. Right. So what I do is I have a wish list. I call everybody on the wish list first. Wonderful. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Aren't you wonderful? Oh, thank you. That's so yeah. great. So it's it's like really you know the people I do who want the David Austin. Yeah. yeah, we we take names and numbers and when they get here 
And people are specific. So yeah. I try really hard to get what they want. Uh huh. And when it arrives, I give them a call, say they're here. You're so yeah. amazing. I love this place so much. Oh, I wish I lived good. closer. I live about an hour away from here. I'll visit anytime. It's <laughs> totally worth it to come here. Another reason I really, really love David Austin Roses is that they're informal. Um, there's a lot to be said for hybrid teas and how wonderful those long stems are for cutting and right. how they're so orderly in the garden. Yes. But I prefer a little more informality. Like if you're planting up a meadow garden or yeah. something that's a little bit on the wild side, yeah. but you want pops of color, there's nothing like a David Austin rose and that billowy. It's going to mix in beautifully. Yes. Yeah. It mixes in so prettily and so gorgeously and so informally right it relaxes your soul i think yes you know, it really does i just love talking to you so much <laughs> oh, thank you <laughs> it's just you you seem like you have a similar love of the the almost the chaos in the garden i kind of want to say yes. like this it's just the, the chaos of nature i just mm -hmm. find that so beautiful and the way that you talk about it is so eloquent it's oh, thank it's you just, you know this is probably why i loved your article so much <laughs> thank you thank you so so are all david austin roses a little bit more informal do you notice i think they're all a little bit more informal mm -hmm. and they're all are full of surprises i haven't found one that hasn't surprised me in some way right i mean always good surprises yeah. It's not like, you know, yeah. including Gertrude Jekyll that time at yeah. the front of the border being 15 feet tall. Right, yeah. That was a really delightful like, What are you surprise. doing? <laughs> yeah. And that's something I love to do in my own garden is walk out there and be surprised and be filled with wonder at just just the magic of this. Yes. Like, these bare sticks are going to turn into the most gorgeous plants. So one more question for you. Yep. If there was a new gardener starting their David Austin collection. Mm -hmm. What are the three starter David Austin roses you would go with? What a great question. I'd steer them towards the more well-behaved small ones mm -hmm. because you're not going to be pruning something 15 feet tall. Right. Some of the more disease resistant ones that I found, the Pilgrim is great if you're going for a climber. Okay. I mean, they're all pretty disease resistant, but yeah. that one I have, it's bomb proof as far as Oh, nice. Goes. Good to know. Yeah. So the Pilgrim's one. Yeah, I really, really like that one. Uh -huh. Again, for um, containers, I would go with Eustacea Vi. Okay. It's just so great. It's beautiful. It really is. Right if on. you're going for an apricot colored one, Crown Princess Margareta. Beautiful. beautiful. It's just so pretty. Yeah. It's just and so gorgeous. For a, a new rose grower, yeah. like what is it that you're thinking of? Do you want them to be as obsessed as I am yeah. in the future? That's kind of what I would <laughs> point them towards. Yeah. Make I mean, it I, easy. I think I would just, you know, there's so many people that are like, <gasps> and get overwhelmed by the selection that you have of, of David Austin. Yeah. So if you could just point to a couple of them, which you did, Crown Princess Margareta, uh, Eustacea, you Bye. Bye. Mm -hmm. and then the pilgrim. I think that that's that's wonderful. Yeah, and then I'm gonna throw in Gertrude Jekyll. Yes, because. that is wonderful too. <laughs> because that's do you want to be pruning something that tall? I know. You know? <laughs> I yeah. Know. The other one is really great, and this is a great gift. The Lady Gardener. Oh yeah. It's a fabulous gift. It's, it's a so really great, beautiful rose, and it's like everybody wants to get their mom that rose. Everybody. Right. And why not? Look it's just it. the classic. Like oh, it's just so beautiful. Yeah. Well, Vanilla, thank you so much. I could tell meeting you last time that you were obsessed, <laughs> which yes. is a good thing. I say that in such a positive way, and I just love talking to you. Like I know I say that a million oh, likewise. times, but likewise, this is so much fun. Yeah, but well, thank, thank you. you so much. Let me know in the comment section if you all have any questions mm -hmm. about David Austin's in particular. Again, Fanula's uh, nursery is Cottage Gardens of Petaluma and Petaluma, California. It is worth a drive. <laughs> like, mm. I don't know how to say that. If you all are within driving distance, I would say take spend a day and come out here because it's one of those nurseries that that is worth the drive to come out here. So, Thank and I, you I, so much. I completely believe that. It's such a beautiful place. Well, I can't wait for you to come back. Yes. Well, thank you. And I hope you all enjoyed this and I hope you all have a chance to get in your garden today. Um, free rooster? Yeah. He's a very special rooster. <laughs> He'll probably show up in a minute. Okay. <laughs>